I'm glad you asked. Here are four facts you need to know about the Savoy Ballroom. Number one, the Savoy Ballroom was the first integrated ballroom for dancers. On March 12, 1926, in Harlem, New York, the Savoy Ballroom was created. During the height of segregated times, the Savoy was built for black patrons. There was no separate entrance for whites. There were no balconies where the white customers would watch the blacks perform. The opening of the Savoy marked a change in the American social pattern. For the first time in history, black and white dancers danced on the same floor, sat and ate across from one another in the booths. This set an enormous precedent, influencing later civil rights movements in the 1960s. Number two. The Savoy Ballroom was the first integrated ballroom for musicians. In the 1920s, jazz needed a place to develop where innovation was not only accepted, but was encouraged. That place was the Savoy. It was where white and black musicians mixed. With the exception of Cab Calloway and later Duke Ellington, it wasn't until late in the swing era in the late 1930s that black bands could play for the white clientele in hotels and other ballrooms. But since audiences wanted to hear Cab Calloway, not the band behind him, the soloists were not spotlighted. Most of the innovative work came from black bands like those led by Jimmy Lunsford and Lucky Millinder, who were restricted to playing in the poor paying clubs in black areas, but everyone was comfortable at the Savoy. Music at the time was segregated only by habit. Black musicians played with black bands. White musicians played society swing. Music promoters like John Hammond knew that the music had to progress. If black and white musicians couldn't come together, swing would be short-lived, and he fought very hard for more integration. Hammond saw the future of good music dependent upon free racial integration. He knew change was needed if this music was to survive. He was the first to bring musicians like Fletcher Henderson, Lionel Hampton, Teddy Wilson, and Charlie Christian to the listening public, and the first to recognize the talents of, among others, Billie Holiday, Lester Young, and Aretha Franklin. Benny Goodman, for instance, played the Savoy only once during his famous battle of the bands with Chick Webb in 1938. However, he visited often when he was in New York and was invited to sit in with the band on numerous occasions, as were the Dorseys and numerous sidemen and white bands. The Savoy played an enormous and largely unrecognized role in the history of jazz. The Savoy should always be remembered along with the men and women who created the music that all America danced to. Number three, famous singers blossomed at the Savoy. In 1934, for instance, Chick Webb plucked the young Ella Fitzgerald out of an Apollo engagement and groomed her for his band. Lena Horne earned much of her early acclaim at the Savoy, as did Billie Holiday, Diana Washington, and Sarah Vaughan. All of these singers would go and have massive careers, but most of them started at the Savoy Ballroom. White artists such as Frank Sinatra and the Andrews Sisters also sang there. Number 4. Lindy Hop was created and evolved at the Savoy Ballroom. Stretching an entire city block from 140th Street to 141st Street on Lenox Avenue, the Savoy Ballroom had two very distinct sides. The 141st Street side was called The Corner, and it belonged to the professional Lindy dancers. It was, in a way, sacred. This was the area where Whitey's Lindy Hoppers worked out their intricate routines and had spectators watch them come and dance. Because of the popularity of Lindy Hop, press agents saw the value of having stars come to the ballroom. The boxes were reserved for them, and stars such as Alice Faye, Lana Turner, Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich, and Dolores Del Rio, the latter on the arm of Orson Welles, all came to the Savoy. At the time, everyone came to watch the Lindy Hoppers dance. The Lindy Hop dance would further impact dance culture throughout Harlem and spread quickly across the United States and to Europe. So there you have it, four fun facts about the Savoy Ballroom. Listen, if you wanna get more rich content like this, subscribe to the channel. I'll be giving more content on swing dancing, swing music, and swing history. If your dance skills are terrible and you are needing to learn how to do Lindy Hop or you're struggling to do that, take my free course below. It's only 40 minutes. I can get you up and going or you can get out there and social dance with people. 40 minutes. It's not that complicated. I'll see you in class.